everybody and welcome back. Let's talk about mask knee. Who ever six months ago thought that we would end up with a wardrobe of these? Can you still hear me through this? I think you can. And all the problems that they're causing for our skin. And over the course of the last five months since we've been in lockdown, I have done so many really, really, really informative and brilliant Q and A's with dermatologists about what to do if you suffer from mask knee. Now, mask knee is one of those terrible portmanteau words where they just put together mask and acne. But actually, I'm not just gonna talk about breakouts caused by masks today. I'm gonna to talk about sensitivity and irritation because this is the thing about masks. I mean, look, look how many I've got now. I've got so many masks. Started with this one, obviously, the classic one. Two new ones. My local dry cleaners makes these, by the way. I don't like wearing the black ones. It makes me feel like I'm about to do a bank robbery. Anyway, they're all double thickness and my preference is a, a, a natural fabric. I do have, I was in a Superdrug and these are super comfortable bikini type material. And then I kind of fell, fell for the fashion of these ones, which is cotton with a sort of overlay of a sort of um, faux leather. But actually the best ones are just double thickness cotton. They really are, they're much more comfortable, they're much easier to breathe through. I think they cause less skin irritations. I actually think these are the most uncomfortable. These are the sort of ones you get off Amazon that every one of us panicked at the beginning of uh, lockdown and kind of bought packs of 50. We paid everything between, you know, 50 quid to kind of 15 pounds for them. Anyway, I don't particularly like these. I don't particularly find them comfortable and I actually find them quite difficult to breathe through. Totally renewed respect for any key worker or medical work that actually has to do a proper job rather than just go shopping in these. Anyway, we now all have a little collection of washable, for me, I prefer a natural fibre, so a cotton or a linen or something like that, masks. And I think what they do is they basically exacerbate what any skin problems you have. So I don't really get breakouts. I mean, I occasionally get them here and it's normally from wearing my big heavy goggles that you always comment on. <laughs> They're like, Marmite, you love them or hate them. And if you think about what those glasses do, if you think where I get breakouts, which is here and here, what they do is they basically sit on the skin and they occlude the skin. And they, they trap makeup, they trap sweat, they trap SPF, they trap all of that. Same with sunglasses as well, you know, exactly the same thing. You know I love a big frame. I've got a huge face, I like a big frame. Anyway, and that's what masks do. If masks are properly fitting, that's what they do. If you have oily skin, they occlude the skin. They keep the sebum in the pores where it can cause problems and breakouts. And if you think about where you normally get spots, which is this area, let's be honest here, that's where the mask is. So if you have dry and sensitive skin, what they do is they then, if they're, a lot of fabrics can wick the kind of transepidermal water loss out of your skin. So basically they can wick hydration and water out of your skin. And then also that they, they simply, they irritate, they rub. The other thing I've noticed is uh, when I first got them, I didn't find them irritating. And then I started sticking them in my washing machine with my biological wash washing powder with my bedding and my towels at 40 degrees. And then they were causing irritations. Like, you know, you'd start wearing a mask and your skin would itch like crazy. And I realized that actually, I don't really have sensitive skin, but what I do have, and which most of all have on a hot summer's day when you're stuck outside, is you have a sensitivity to your washing powder being in close contact with your face. So I then went out and bought some unfragranced, super gentle, it's what they call undies washing powder. You'll find it in the sort of, there's all your biological washing powders and then your, your colored washing powders that don't have the biological um, enzymes in them. But I went for an unfragranced, and I'll drop a picture in here. I went for an unfragranced washing lotion for delicates and that made all the difference. So that's my second bit of advice. Step one, try and get a natural fabric, a cotton or a linen double thickness that you can wash on a 40 degree. I mean, the pattern ones are pretty, but plain ones are fine. If all of you went crazy for these ones when I first got them, I still cannot get my dry cleaner to sell these, sadly. Um, he's just a little one man band, well, family band, and he doesn't really get <laughs> the power of the internet. Anyway, um, so this is just a sort of, um, a sort of broderie anglais backed with a linen. So go for a natural fabric and then 
wash them if you have any sensitivities at all and I don't think of myself as having sensitive skin wash them in a gentle unfragranced enzyme free biological free made for your silk undies washing lotion you'll notice a big difference so let's get the masks out of the way for a start and let's talk about what to do when you take your mask off who knew we'd have these I remember when people first started making these I remember the the designer Christian Siriano turned his uh, clothing manufacturing um uh what is it it's sort of like a beautiful warehouse designer warehouse he turned it over to masks right at the beginning of lockdown and I remember thinking that's a bit strange we're not going to be wearing them for very long well how wrong was I and how right how wrong was I and how right was he? Anyway, so there you go, let's move those out of the way. And let's get back to what to do. Okay, so the first thing you do when you come in from the end of the day and you've been wearing your mask is you need to cleanse and you need to cleanse really efficiently. Now for this, I would say you've got two options. If you've got um, a breakout prone skin and if you're getting sort of more uh, blackheads here, breakouts here, breakouts along the jaw, you need a rinse off gel cleanser and you know I'm going to say you can choose whatever you want but don't spend a lot of money CeraVe hydrating gel cleanser is perfect the sister product the CeraVe SA smoothing cream cleanser is perfect because it has salicylic acid in this is just loaded with um, humectants um, it's a really gentle non-foaming cream gel cleanser rinses clear away works for the entire family however the SA cleanser is perfect if you've got breakouts no, I'm going to say add in a cloth, obviously, because the one thing that may, that will happen is your makeup will be pushed against your skin. So you need some sort of physical exfoliant, whether it's a bamboo one or whether it's a microfiber one. Um, that's a magnetone bamboo one. I don't I just don't find them. I know they're much more ecologically friendly. But I just find them a bit rough on my skin. I much prefer the microfiber one. However, if you are concerned, make sure you get the little wash bags that you wash them in that contain the microfibers so they don't go into the environment. If you're going to have a sensitive dry skin, and you'll know that because your skin will be red and inflamed, it, it'll, it'll almost get welts here and here, and a sort of red dry itchiness, then, you know, get something like Superdrug Vitamin E hot cloth cleanser. Again, it's basically just a much more hydrating, unfragranced version of the CeraVe. It's a cream to milk rinse off cleanser, really lovely, gets rid of all of your makeup, it's absolutely fine. So that's the thing to do. You need to make sure at the end of the day, the minute you get in the house, get rid of all of that sweat, makeup, sebum. Cleanse your skin properly. Just allow your skin to properly breathe. Skin doesn't breathe, but you know what I mean. Let the air get to it. Let your skin enjoy being clean for a little while. Then I think the next step for most people will be some sort of acid, even if you've got quite a sensitive skin. Now, obviously I'm going to say you need a salicylic acid. So following on from the uh, CeraVe SA cleanser, you need a, a salicylic acid on those breakouts left overnight. And what I would do is I would come in at the end of the day, if I was working or I was a key worker, I'd been on the tube or the bus or the train or something like that, been to the shop, something like that. I would cleanse my skin and then I would just put a salicylic acid on my breakouts. That is Paula's Choice 2% BHA gel and that's the liquid. Um, but if you don't have breakouts, then you don't need that. Something I love a lactic acid, so I would probably put a lactic acid on where the mask has been, or overnight, all over. That's the uh, Garden of Wisdom Lactic Acid 5% Serum. I really like it. If you prefer a lightweight lotion, the REN one. I personally prefer lactic acid. This is the REN Ready Steady Glow Clock Tonic, and it's a brilliant three-way acid. I really love it. It is fragranced, but you know, you, you're wiping it on your skin, and... If you don't have a sensitivity to fragrance, you're absolutely fine. It's a combination of salicylic acid, lactic acid, and azelaic acid. So it's a kind of suits all skin types one. I really love that product. That is a really well formulated REN product. You know I love lactic acid, so if you want a really gentle lactic acid for dry skin, then I really love the Kiehl's Daily Refining Milk Fill Toner. That's lactic acid in a sort of almond milk base. If I wasn't shaking that around, you'd see that separate out. But basically that's heavy on the humectants and low on the lactic acid. Then what do you do? Um, it's very interesting what you do before you put your mask on. So that's when you come home at the end of the day, because I'm presuming you're watching this, you've taken your mask off and you want to know what to do. 
before you put your mask on and it's very interesting i interviewed a couple of dermatologists about this and they were saying if you have acne prone skin then yes you can put a sort of dab of the, any of these acids on your breakouts before you put your mask on but what you actually need is a barrier cream between you and the outside world so if your skin is dry and sensitive and you're wearing your mask for long periods of time you need a barrier cream and you know i'm going to mention something like cerave it's an absolute classic it's just loaded it's unfragranced it's a lovely moisturizer it can be used all over the body but if you want a slightly thicker layer here before you put your mask on maybe over your lips if your if your mask is sensitizing your lips CeraVe is absolutely perfect another one I really love is indeed Hydrolon they're essentially just slightly amped up moisturizers and then the ordinary NMF it's a really nice one again they are what I would use on a really dry cold winter's day but you can wear them all year round under your mask if you are if your face is dry and tight from your mask um i've got two other final ones i want to mention here if you've got breakouts and you still need a barrier function cream then go for a lightweight hydrating gel that's formulated for breakouts something like paula's choice ultralight daily hydrating fluid is perfect it's also got an SPF in it as well and antioxidants. So it comes from her clear range. So it's a nice hydrating product, but formulated not to occlude your skin or, you know, exacerbate breakouts. And then finally, if you've got ultra, ultra, ultra sensitive skin, and this is what I had for a short period of time before I realized that I was actually not insensitive. Um, I wouldn't say allergic, but sensitized to my mask, but to the washing powder I was washing it in. The two things I used most were, and I've mentioned this so many times, I've loved this during lockdown. This is a La Roche-Posay Dermalergo Telerian. So it's, their, it's from their Telerian range for sensitive skin. And this has a dipeptide in for sensitive skin and it's been proven to repair barrier function. And it's actually, the active ingredient was originally tested by the manufacturers on rosacea prone skin. Because rosacea is obviously a combination of being, uh, having exactly, looking a little bit like an acne in a breakup, but actually being sensitive prone and sensitivity prone. So it's a really lovely one for redness and sensitivity and acne prone skin. How it works on all of them, I don't know. It just works, it's amazing. And if your skin is on fire and you're so sensitized to whatever the mask is putting on your skin, but you cannot take your mask off, Dipra Base Itch Relief Cream has been my go-to for everything this summer, for insect bites, for dry arms, dry legs, dry skin, dry scalp, but mainly for mask sensitivity. So this is the Dipra Base Itch Relief Cream. It's absolutely brilliant. It was originally tested on super young infants, so it can be used on children as well. I know children don't have to wear masks in the UK, but it's an absolutely brilliant, perfect barrier cream. You can put it on your skin where the mask touches your skin and it itches. It works well under makeup. All of these products work well under makeup, but if you just need an extra top up over the top, if you're not wearing makeup, under your mask. They're the things to go for. Look for a, bla a bland, and that's a terrible thing to call a skincare product, but look for a really hydrating, unfragranced cream that just gives your skin back what it needs. It gives it cer ceramides, it gives it hyaluronic acid, it gives it glycerin, all those things your skin needs. Honestly, CeraVe, Indeed Labs, The Ordinary, perfect. Look for something lightweight and gel-like if you are prone to breakouts, and, and also Dipra-B, Dipra Base Itch Relief. These two products have saved my skin in lockdown because my skin has become so much more sensitive. So essentially, these are all products I've mentioned before. You just might need to up your game slightly. If, by the way, you have any outbreaks or scratches or anything like that, can I just do another shout out for Clinisant? Not only can it be used to um, anti-back your hands and antiviral your hands, it can be used directly on your face as well, which is so rare. You know, we're all using these anti-back hand gels at the moment, but you wouldn't want to put them on your face, but this can be sprayed directly on your face. And you can also spray it on your mask to anti-viral, anti-back your mask before you wash it, but still washing your mask at a 40 degree wash should be absolutely fine in detergent anyway. Please remember to buy a special wash for your mask if you have sensitive skin. I don't have sensitive skin. Well, I didn't until I washed my mask in my normal. It was kind of, what would it have been? It was like aerial. I mean, you know, I wash all my bedding in it. I have no problem at all. I wash my underwear in it. I have no problem at all. I wash my towels in it. 
But that just being around your face and realizing that that biological detergent is probably not good to have around your skin for any length of time. I hope this helps. These are my hero products for all skin types for dealing with mask knee. It's a poor manto word that doesn't really work because there should be mask sensitive skin and mask dry skin and mask irritated skin. There just isn't mask skin that breaks out. But I hope it helps anyway. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Next week, let's do an empties. I haven't done an empties for so long and it's been very interesting to see what I've used in lockdown because not unsurprisingly, just before the weather got really hot here, I was really retinoling my face like crazy. You might have noticed it in a few videos where you thought, is that makeup a bit patchy? <laughs> it really was. You weren't imagining it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll put all the details of all the products down below for everybody that ever asks and hasn't noticed. This tiny little arrowhead here. Yes, here. And if you tap on it, all the details of the products come down, down below. I make sure I put all the details in and I put all the URLs in so you can click straight through and find out more about the products. 